Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so that you never miss any video lessons from Rao's IS Study Circle. Join the official Telegram channel of Rao's IS Study Circle to stay updated and get all the materials on Telegram. The link to the channel can be found in the description box. Hello and welcome to Daily Prelims Practice. Here we take up MCQs based on important articles and news from the Hindu and the Indian Express newspaper. Topics which we are going to cover today are displayed on your screen. Let's begin the discussion. Now let's start our session with our first question which is based on this news article from the Hindu newspaper. According to this article, Supreme Court ordered the release of all six remaining convicts serving life imprisonment in connection with the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case. Now as you know that under Article 72 of the Constitution empowers the President to grant pardons and under Article 161 of the Constitution the Governor of a state also possesses the pardoning power. Now as you can see from this previous year question that power of president and governor is one of the core theme for your UPSC prelims examination. Now let's come to the practice question. Here you have to identify the incorrect statements with respect to the pardoning powers of the president and governor. Now let's come to the first statement. The governor can pardon, suspend or commute a death sentence of any person. Now this statement is incorrect. Why? Because under article 161 of the constitution, the governor of a state can grant pardons, reprieves, respites and remissions of punishment or suspend, remit and commute the sentence of any person convicted of any offence against the state law. But here we are particularly asking about death sentence which only president can pardon and governor can not. So even if a state law prescribes death sentence the power to grant pardon lies with the president and not with the governor. However, the governor can suspend, remit or commute a death sentence. So this statement is incorrect. Now let's come to the second statement. President can grant a reprieve, respite or commutation to sentence by a court martial but cannot pardon. Again, this statement is incorrect as president can grant a pardon reprieve, respite or commutation by military courts while governor cannot. Now these two are major difference between governor and president pardoning power. Now let's come to the third statement. The pardoning power of the president is absolute. Again this statement is incorrect as the pardoning power of the president is not absolute. It should be exercised by the president on the advice of the council of ministers. However, under Article 74.1, impasse president to return its for reconsideration once. If the council of ministers decided against it, the president has no option but to abide by it. Also, the pardoning power of the president is independent of the judiciary. It is an executive power. So all above given statements are incorrect. So our correct answer is D. 1, 2 and 3. Answer of this PYQ is option B. Now let's come to the next question which is based on this article from the Hindu newspaper. Now this article is about a recent study conducted by Pune based Environment Institute which revealed that altitude plays role in dietary habits of primate species. Also in the same article mention of Kalatop Khajiar wildlife century and you should know that this century is in Himachal Pradesh. Now as you know UPSC has been asking Questions based on species, their habitats and features. For example, this descriptive question came in year 2019 about banana plant. Now let's come to the practice question. Here you have to identify correct statements with respect to Himalayan grey langur. Now the first one is, it is a leaf eating monkey. Now this statement is correct as Himalayan grey langur or Chamba sacred langur is a Colobine. That means it is a leaf eating monkey. Now let's come to the second statement. It is native to Indian subcontinent and found in Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir. Again this statement is correct as it is native to Indian subcontinent and their distribution is reported from Himachal Pradesh, basically Chamba region, Jammu and Kashmir and from Pakistan and Nepal. Now let's come to the third statement. It is listed as vulnerable under IUCN Red List. This statement is incorrect as it is an endangered species globally. 
as its population is estimated to be less than 1500 mature individual so here the correct answer is option b that is one and two only and answer of this pyq is option a andaman islands now our next question is based on mangrove alliance for climate and this alliance is important as mangroves can store carbon up to 400 percent faster than land-based tropical rainforests and this is increasingly catching the attention of the world which is desperately looking for ways to keep global temperature in check now as you know question based on climate initiatives is one of the recurring theme in upsc prelims examination like this question based on global alliance for climate smart agriculture came in year 2018 now let's come to the practice question here you have to identify the correct statements with respect to mangrove alliance for climate the first one is it was launched in cop25 summit to scale up and accelerate the conservation and restoration of the mangrove forest now this statement is incorrect as it was launched by united arab emirates and indonesia on the sidelines of the un climate summit cop27 so it's not 25 it's 27 being held in sharm el sheikh in egypt and the purpose of this initiative is to educate and spread worldwide awareness on the importance of mangroves and their role in curbing global warming to fight climate change. Now let's come to the second statement. India and Sri Lanka have joined it as partners. Now this statement is correct as India along with Australia, Japan, Spain and Sri Lanka have joined it as partners. So here our correct answer is option B that is two only. An answer of this PYQ is option B, that is two only. Now our next question is based on this article from the Hindu newspaper. According to this article, the government has dropped the practice of releasing preliminary monthly merchandise trade estimates at the beginning of the month. Now as you know, economical concepts like balance of trade, balance of payment are important for your UPSC prelims examination. Like this question about international trade of India came in year 2020. Now let's come to the practice question. Here you have to identify correct statements with respect to trade to GDP ratio. Now the first statement is the trade to GDP ratio is calculated as ratio of net export of goods and services to GDP. Now to find out whether this statement is right or wrong, one should know what is trade to GDP ratio and what is ratio of net exports of goods and services to GDP. Now trade to GDP ratio is an indicator of the relative importance of the international trade in the economy of a country. Basically trade to GDP is calculated as ratio of total exports plus total imports to the GDP. On the other hand net export is the difference between the value of a country's exports versus its imports that is total exports minus total imports to the GDP. Now if net export value is positive that means it is a trade surplus economy and if it is negative that means it is a trade deficit economy. Now as you can see the trade to GDP ratio and ratio of net export of goods and services to GDP both are different so statement first is incorrect. Now let's come to the second statement. In general, India's trade to GDP ratio is higher than China. Now this statement is correct as India's trade to GDP is more than 40%. However, China's trade to GDP ratio is around 36 to 37%. And this was highlighted by one of the previous year's economic survey. So here our correct answer is option B, that is two only. Answer of this PYQ is option D, that is 1, 3 and 4 only. Now our next question is based on this article from the Hindu newspaper. This article is about request to revoke the clearance provided for the diversion of forest area in the Great Nicobar Island for a developmental project. As you know, UPSC has been asking question based on important geographical region and locations for example, this question came in year 2014. Now let's come to the practice question. Here you have to find out the correct sequence 
of Andaman and Nicobar Island as one proceeds from north to south. The first option is Barren Island, second is Narkondam Island, third is Great Nicobar, fourth is Kar Nicobar. Now let us solve this practice question with the help of map. Now as you can see that Andaman Islands are divided into three main islands. First is North, Middle and South Andaman. Duncan Passage separates Little Andaman from South Andaman. And the Great Andaman group of islands in the north is separated by 10 degree channel from the Nicobar group in the south. Now here, Narkondam Island that is India's easternmost island is a small volcanic island located in the North Andaman Sea. And it is part of Andaman Island. Somewhere here, it's Barren Island and it is an island located in the Andaman Sea. And it is only confirmed active volcano in the Indian subcontinent. Now, among Nicobar Island, the Great Nicobar is the largest. And it is the southernmost island and it is very close to Sumatra Island of Indonesia. Now, the Kar Nicobar is the northernmost island. So, if one proceeds from north to south, the first will be Narkondam Island. Second would be Barren Island, then Kar Nicobar and the last would be Great Nicobar. So with this, our correct answer is option C, that is 2143. Now as you have already seen that the Great Andaman group of island in the north is separated by 10 degree channel from the Nicobar group in the south. So correct answer of this PYQ is option A, that is Andaman and Nicobar. Now our next question is based on this article from the Indian Express. According to this article, unauthorized construction and encroachments around the tomb of Afzal Khan in the Pratapgarh fort in Satara district were demolished. Now, the Pratapgarh fort's historical significance comes from the Battle of Pratapgarh, which took place on 10th November 1659 between Maratha warrior Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj and Bijapur Adil Shahi Sultanate's general Afzal Khan. Now in the battle, Shivaji Maharaj killed Afzal Khan. Now as you can see, question based on designation and responsibilities is one of the recurring theme in UPSC prelims examination. Now let's come to the practice question. Here you have to find out the correct pairs of officers and the responsibilities of Ashtra Pradhan system of Shivaji's administration. Now before answering this question, let me briefly tell you that what is Ashpradhan. Ashpradhan was a council of eight ministers and all the eight ministers had independent charge of their respective departments. Now the first one is Peshwa. He was the prime minister and he oversaw general welfare of the state. So this pair is correct. Second is Amatya. He was the finance minister and he used to check and countersign all public account of the state. So this pair is incorrect. Now next is Mantri who used to keep a diary of the king's daily work in the court. Then next is Suman. He was the foreign secretary. He oversaw foreign affairs. So again this pair is incorrect. Next is Sachiv. He was the home secretary. Then next is Dev Adhyaksh. He looked after grants to religious bodies and learned men. So this pair is correct. So from here, you can see only two pairs are correct. So our answer is option B, only two pairs. Answer of this practice question is option B, that is two and three only. That's all for today. Stay tuned for more such updates.